Hey, welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do Cronbach's alpha on SPSS. So Cronbach's alpha is a measure of internal consistency or internal reliability. So basically that's what Cronbach's alpha is. It's asking to what extent do the items within your questionnaire measure the same thing. Um, so for this example, we're going to look at a questionnaire of self-esteem comprised of 10 items in total. And five of those items are about one's self-esteem at school and five of those items are about one's self-esteem in the context of home. Uh, we're also going to take a look at reverse coding. So if you already are comfortable with reverse coding, you know what it is, you know how to do it, feel free to use the timestamp in the description below to skip forward to the next section of the video. Um, so we'll just take a look at what reverse coding is. So basically we use it usually to ensure that people are paying attention when they're answering questionnaires, because if you have lots of questions, and they're all the same, then that gets a bit boring and the participant might switch off. So we can put a reverse coded in there occasionally and um, that will ensure that the participant keeps paying attention. Um, so if we look at uh, these items here, I've put an R next to the third school item and I've put an R next to the second home item. And that just indicates that those items need to be reverse scored. So we can imagine that a positively scored or a normal item in the school self-esteem section of the questionnaire. That would be something like, I'm really good at, at exams, and a person who has high self-esteem in the context of school would probably answer four or five for that question. Um, but if you, the question was something like, um, I'm really bad at exams, then that person, that same person, would probably answer one or two for that item because they have good self-esteem in the context of school. So if we take a look at participant number one, they kind of match this profile. So they've answered five, four, two, four, five. So the only low score they have is for the reverse coded item. Um, and the same thing, if we look at the home section of the questionnaire, they've got four, one, four, five, five. So the only low score they have is for this reverse coded item. And we want to make sure that all the items are essentially going in the same direction. So we have to re reverse code these uh, particular items with the, with the R's next to them. So let's take a look at how to do that. So I'm gonna go up to transform and then down to recode into same variables. And then I'm just gonna transfer these, these items with the R next to them into this variables box, and then I'll go to old and new values. And so this scale is from one to five. So basically we want, if the participant answered one for a reverse coded or reversed phrased question, we want that value to ultimately be five. If they answered two, we want it to be four. Three will be the same. Four will become two, and uh, five will become one. So if we start off by entering one into the old value section here, then I'll put a five into the new value section and I'll go to add. Then I'll do two here, then four here, then add three. I guess you don't really need to do this, but I'll do it just for fun. So three and three, add, and then four here, two here, add, five here, one here, add. And then what you want to see is that you have all of these numbers on the left going up. So one, two, three, four, five and all of these numbers on the right is going down, five, four, three, two, one. And of course, the same principle would apply if you had like a one to seven scale. You would just do one equals seven, six equals two, five equals three, etc. cetera. Um, so we've got that, this all looks good. Then I'll just go to continue and then to okay. Okay, so what we can see now, hopefully. Okay, so if we looked at uh, participant one before and we saw that their score for uh, the reverse phrased item was much lower than their scores for the other items. But now, because we've gone through the reverse coding process, we have a four here, and we previously had a two there. And the same thing for the home section of the scale. This participant previously had a one in this for this item, but now they have a five. So this um, just indicates that the reverse coding process has worked. Uh, so now we've done that, we're ready to run the Cronbax alpha analysis. So we can go up to analyze, then down to scale, then across to reliability analysis. And then I'm gonna transfer. So what we're gonna do is look at the subscale Cronbax alphas first, and then we'll look at the Cronbax alpha for the total 
a questionnaire. So I'll do, I'll select all of these school-based items first and then just transfer them over to this items box. We can see here that alpha is ticked, so that's what we want. In the statistics bit, I'm going to select item scale and scale if item deleted. Uh, we won't necessarily need all of this information, but some of it can be interesting, so we'll just tick those anyway. Then I'll go to continue and then over to OK. So the most interesting thing is in this reliability statistics table. So we've got a Cronbach's alpha value of 0.915. So generally the accepted value for a Cronbach's alpha is 0.7. So that just means if your value is above 0.7, then you have an acceptable level of internal consistency or internal reliability in other words. So other than that, I would say the most interesting table to look at is the item total statistics table. And so the most interesting part of this one is this last um, column on the right, where it says Cronbach's alpha if item deleted. So this basically tells you how would this value in the reliability statistics table change if you chose to remove one of these items. And sometimes you see that this value would actually improve if you got rid of one of your items. So we could see that um, for the most part, the, the overall reliability of the scale would decrease if we remove these items, because we have 915 here. And if we remove this item, it would be 0.889, so it would go down. Um, with the case of the second item, it would improve a tiny, tiny bit. So it would go from 0.915 to 0.918. So it's a really tiny improvement. And since um, the Cronbach's alpha is very high already, it's very close to one, there's really no need to do anything here. And also risk of removing items is that you can't uh, as readily make comparisons to past results because researchers will have typically used all of the items in a, in a questionnaire. So if you start removing items, then you can't really make comparisons to those past results as well. Okay, so this is the school section of the questionnaire. So let's move on to the home section of the questionnaire. So we'll go to analyze again, uh, down to scale, then across to reliability analysis. And I'm just going to remove all of these school bits and we'll put the, the home items in instead. This will all be set up from before because it remembers what we did. So we'll go to OK. And same thing again. So we've got a a nice high value 0 0.949 uh, so this is way above the the normal threshold for acceptability of 0.7 and we have a similar picture again so generally speaking if we removed items this this value would decrease so we've got 0 0.949 here if we removed this one it would become 0 0.930 it would slightly increase if we remove this item but as I said before it's generally best to, to leave items in especially if you're your value is very high. And then lastly, we'll just take a look at how to do the reliability for the questionnaire overall. So um, not looking at the sp uh, specific subscales. So analyze, scale, reliability analysis. And then I'm just gonna add all of these school items back in. So now we have all of the items from the questionnaire in this items box here. So then I'll just go to okay. And we can see now we have all of the items here. And in this case, the Cronbach alpha for the overall measure is even higher than it is for the, for the individual subscales. So we've got 0.96. Again, we can see that basically the scale would go down if we removed any one of these items um, with a few small exceptions. You know, here it would be slightly higher if you remove this one. Uh, be, the, be the same if we remove this one, slightly higher if we remove this one. But as I said before, we generally want to avoid removing items, so we will just leave those in. And now we can take a look at how to report these results. So it's pretty simple. We're just going to say that Cronbach's alphas indicated that internal consistency, you could use reliability instead of consistency if you prefer, was acceptable for the home and school subscales, as well as for the scale overall. So we'll just take another look at where these come from. So this is the home, um, the home bit. You can see all the home items here. We've got 0.949 here. So I've just rounded 0.949 to 
and school I've got as 0.92 so this is just an alpha symbol and so if we look at the school items at the top so we've got the school items here and I've just rounded this value of 0.915 up to 0.92 and if we go down to this table where we have all of the items we've got 0 0.960 and so that's just presented as alpha equals 0 0.96 so that's about all there is to the Cronbach's Alpha. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I will get back to you. And thanks very much for watching.